Hi there, and welcome to a new tutorial on Scratch and Ditpack Plus. In this video we'll be talking about handling phantom cine footage, and why Scratch is the best solution on the market right now for this kind of footage. I'll show you how to create metadata reports and transcode to daily formats such as ProRes, H.264 and DNX, as well as high quality VFX plates in the OpenEXR format. Let's dive in. Here I have a fresh new project. Let's import a couple of clips. Here we go. And the first thing I want to highlight here is the timecode. With phantom files in particular, timecode can be interpreted in a number of ways. Depending on which application you're going to edit on and conform in, you need to consider a couple of options. Option number one, you keep the timecode as is and render out your dailies. However, you might run the risk of another application not being able to read the timecode or read it differently from the original Phantom Cine files when conforming later on in the process. Option number two, you exit the project and enter the system settings advanced tab. In here, look for the Phantom timecode setting. Enable it and restart Scratch. If we now import that same set of clips again, they will come in with a zero timecode. This is the most straightforward way, however, you then need to be sure that every clip name only exists once, so you don't end up with two clips of the same name and timecode, as they won't conform nicely anymore. Option number three is simply to keep the original timecode and transcode these phantom clips to a new online format like ProRes 4x4XQ and from this point onwards never go back to the original phantom cine files but always use the ProRes files. Which option works best always depends on a case by case basis. But it is important to test the pipeline with all applications and departments involved before deciding on one option. Next, let's take a look at all the custom metadata that Scratch is able to extract from the source files. In the metadata stack on the right, we can scroll down and find important information such as the source bit depth, capture frame rate, offload application and trigger time. Note that all this metadata will also appear in the rendered dailies or OpenXR plates. However, if you want this metadata in a generic format in order to send to another application, you can simply export an ALE right here. Make sure that extended metadata is enabled and hit export. If we now open the resulting ALE file, we can spot all the metadata in there. Alternatively, you can export a PDF report from either the tools menu or the render tab. Select the clip metadata report type, optionally add a logo and then pick the metadata items you want to include in the report. In our case, we'll go with bit depth camera frame rate, created by and the file size. Once exported, Scratch will automatically open the report in your PDF viewer of choice. Nice. Now as you can see, right now the clips do not yet have scene and take metadata assigned. We'll take care of that in a bit. Time to jump into the color effects tab and take a look at the image itself. Over here in the phantom menu, we have access to all the bearing and decoding settings. In here, Scratch offers a couple of options, some of which you won't find in other applications. Next to the usual suspects being Gamma, Exposure, Kelvin and Tint, most apps offer the Gamma and Log1 and Log2 options to debayer the raw data too. Scratch, however, offers on top of that to debayer straight into ACES for a smooth ACES workflow. Next, we have some more color options, which are also only available in Scratch. We can choose to apply the tone curve that ships with the clips and also decide which color matrix to apply as the phantom clips can ship with a camera specific color matrix and even contain a user defined matrix on top of that in order to carry a certain look. And on some clips, Scratch even offers a highlight recovery function which can really recover a great deal of image information in the highlights as you can see on this clip. This however can only work with unpacked clips, as packed clips already have baked in the white balance and the highlight information cut off. While we are in the color effects tab, we can of course also apply lookup tables, CDLs or grade the footage manually. Now whilst going through our clips, we can also use the scene take up data tool to assign scene and take information, so not only our reports but also our dailies that we render out of scratch will then carry. Let's do this real quick. We'll start with scene 13, take 1 and enable auto mode. 
If we now jump to the next shot using the corresponding buttons or the hotkeys on our keyboard, control or command and right arrow, the take number automatically increases. If we want, we can mark this take as a circle take before moving on to the next shot. Let's assume this is now scene 14. We hit the corresponding button here to increase the scene number and that also resets the take number right away. Nice. So let's now look at exporting our footage from scratch. On to the render tab. For an in-depth look at creating an output tree, please check our other tutorials. For now, I'll recall a previously saved template and attach it to the main output node here. As you can see, we have three branches. The first one enters a transformer node, scaling the content down to just 1280x720. Then goes through a burn-in node to burn in some metadata. If we double-click the node, we can take a quick look. Back to the render tab, and we finally go into an H.264 encoder node. Our export file name specification uses scene and take, so that Scratch exports single clips, but reflecting their individual scene and take number in the file name. Also, we added the circle take hash code so that circle takes can be found via their file name as well. Next branch again features a transformer node scaling the content down to HD resolution and then going into a DNX encoder node. Here we simply use SNAME as the file mask spec, so we won't have any issues conforming the timeline later on to the original Phantom Clips. Of course, instead of a DNX encoder, we could also have added a ProRes encoder node. Scratch also supports ProRes encoding on Windows and will forward all the source metadata to the ProRes clips as well. And lastly, we go straight into an image node, rendering at the native resolution to OpenXR with a zip compression. Here we not only used SNAME for the actual file name, but also to create a folder for each EXR sequence based on the source clip name. All we have to do now is to add those three render nodes to the process queue and fire off the queue. Scratch will now render all three nodes in parallel. The advantage of doing that is that the source clip only needs to be read in once. Also any color transforms or grades that we might have used will only need to be applied once and then the frames are distributed to all three nodes rendering their respective format. And of course, Scratch is able to render in the background. So we can close the process queue and continue to work on our project by creating more timelines, importing more footage and prep it for transcode. That's it for this tutorial, I hope this was useful and see you next time. Bye!